Welcome back, everybody. So this episode, I'm actually going to go stay at my family's hunt camp up north. It's like two hours away. Um, because I don't have enough material for you to show you what's going on with the trailer. And there was a few setbacks, but you'll see about that in the next one. So right now, I am looking for a generator because there's actually no power or water or anything like that at this cabin camp thing. So I need a generator. And I need to see if it works. <laughs> Should be good. I got both dogs with me because I'm going up alone and I have never gone up to my cottage alone. We always go with other people. Um, so, I don't know, I'm a little like scared to be alone up there, which is weird because I do a lot of things alone. But for some reason, staying at my cottage freaks me out a little bit. <laughs> severe weather system that rolled through southern Ontario this afternoon. Ooh. Wow, okay, we got hit with a pretty big storm, but I got the car all packed up. <laughs> so we're gonna head out now. It's, a, it's 147, so let's go. Up north, it's saying on the weather app that um, it didn't get hit with rain and um, there should be sun. So that's good. Hopefully I'm not driving right into the storm. <laughs> so I'm thinking maybe I'll share some like facts about me or just talk about my life a little bit so you can get to know me a little bit more. You know? Starting with Layla. Because I think Layla's story is kind of interesting. Layla wasn't supposed to be my dog. She was supposed to be my brother's dog. And she was my brother's dog for the first year. But the thing is, my brother had a German short hair pointer before Layla. That's her breed. She's a German short hair pointer and she's eight years old, okay? So there's that. And tragically, extremely tragically, she was hit by a car and it was really devastating. Like, he really loved that dog a lot and it was just heartbreaking. And then a couple months later, he saw that there was a litter for sale of German short hair pointers. Um, and so he said, okay, I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna get another one. So we got Layla. My interpretation of the whole story is that like, he just didn't really bond with Layla the same way that he did with his other dog. And maybe he just wasn't ready. And I was working with dogs at the time. So I was able to take care of Layla as a puppy while my brother was working full time, nine to five, Monday to Friday. Over time, it just kind of ended up like, okay, can you take Layla for the day? Can you take Layla for a couple days? Um, and then I would just start asking to take Layla because I just fell in love with her. Like I just fell in love with Layla. I can't remember exactly when, why, or how, but one day it was just like, okay, I take Layla and you can come visit her. <laughs> so yeah, that's Layla's story. I should add that Sophie, the other German short hair with me, is actually Layla's daughter. And that's my brother's dog now. So in the end, everything worked out over time. And now he has Sophie and I have Layla and it's a big happy family. <laughs> Tiny town. Oh, hello. This one? Yep. Oh, okay. Thanks. Yep. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
listen, I'm probably gonna sound like a big baby, but I'm actually scared to stay here alone. <laughs> I'm looking for any excuse to go home right now, but really it's fine. I'm just, I'm being a baby. You belong with me in my sweet heart. She was standing next to me. We're here, guys. <laughs> The driveway is a bit of an ordeal. Um, I'm gonna stop here at this. Oh yeah, the bottom of my car. Okay, hold on. You guys can get out. So she's up there in the cottage. And I guess I just wanna double check that the road up is okay. My car is so low, so these rocks are kind of, kind of no good. We made it up. It didn't sound very good, but we're here. Welcome to the cabin. Give you a little tour, okay? Starting from this end. Bedroom. Bedroom, kind of. There's a toilet. I don't remember that. It's a couch, fireplace, another bed, another couch, some chairs, a table. This. We have this TV here and tons of VHS's, which I'll probably watch later to keep my mind off of the darkness. And the kitchen, which we came into first. This is kind of where we, oh my gosh, there's water. Yes, if I need to wash anything, this is how we do it. Just let the water out, wash. Here's our stove. There is no propane. There's not even a tank. Good thing I brought my little cook stove. Maybe if I make a fire, I can do everything on the fire. First thing is first, I think I need to get everything out of the car, set up my bed, make sure that the generator works and that I can get power when it does get dark, and then prepare everything for a fire because there is no propane tank as you just saw. to worry about that later. This is the front yard. These girls are so happy. Uh, this is the fire pit. So let us make this a very good fire pit, shall we? Ready? There we go. Can you hear all those people? Nice, right? I did that. We usually come up here during hunting season, so in the fall and things like that, in the winter. So you never hear people, it's always so quiet. So it is kind of nice that I can hear people, you know, in case anything goes wrong, which it won't. Um, there are lots of people nearby. They're laughing and having a really jolly old time, so that's nice. Can you hear them? They're really having a great time. <laughs> anyway, loving the fire. And that's the third thing on my list done. I got the broccolini. I have two steaks. Ooh. And I have mussels. So I need to boil up a big pot of water and stick this whole bag in. It's already cooked, it just needs to be warmed. So that's what's for dinner. I'm gonna feed these dogs. Here, Sophie. So what I'm gonna do here is kind of bring out some of those coals out this way. 
so that I can start heating up the water and uh, getting things prepared to cook. Pepper. Okay, let's throw them on. <laughs> so this place has been here since my dad was like 18. Him and my grandfather and uh, some of our other family members, they all built it together. They came up on this bus actually. There's bunk beds and stuff in it and they all stayed in that bus while they were building this cabin. So it's been around for a long time and nothing has been done to it since the original build. <laughs> It'd be nice if we, one day we would renovate it. We talk about it every year, but everyone has lives to live, you know? and we only ever come up here to hunt. So it does the job, it has its charms. If you are the type that isn't afraid of mice and you're okay with no electricity and no running water and no bathroom, then it's great. <laughs> it's 100 acres, it's really beautiful. There's a beaver dam. I, I went there in a previous video when I was picking up the fifth wheel with my brother yeah, the beaver dam over there is really, really nice. Woo! That looks awesome. Tell me this doesn't look so good. I wish I had someone to share this with. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. I don't know how it's gonna be once it gets dark, but I'm definitely feeling peaceful and not as scared as I thought I was gonna be. The mosquitoes, get out of there. I've probably eaten like seven of them already. We all know in these camping situations, or situations like this, you just stop caring about so many things, cleanliness wise, or is it just me? It can't be. So what do we want to talk about? Of course, you already know my brother, my twin brother. If you didn't know, his name's John Rui. People call him John, but his full name is John hyphen Rui, which is uh, kind of trippy for some people. And then I have two sisters, one's one year older than me, and then the other is the oldest, and she's four years older, I think, I'm pretty sure. And then I have a stepsister and a stepbrother, whom actually, my stepsister was my best friend growing up, and we always used to say, I wish we were sisters, I wish we'd lived together, we were together all the time. And then one day, my parents were never really together, they lived in the same house, but they were never really together, and then one day, my mom met my now stepsister's dad, and uh, that was it. It's been like 12 years now they've been together, maybe more. I don't know, time flies. Um, so that's kind of interesting, and now we're all one big crazy family. Polished it off. <laughs> I'm just going to clean everything up, and then I think I'd like to show you the sunset from a really pretty spot. Hopefully we can make it there in time. I'm really glad I have this here to wash my hands because I'm a little bit afraid of getting poison ivy. I mean, I already have poison ivy on my legs right now, but uh, it's nice to keep my hands clean in case I accidentally touch it and then touch my face because that's happened before. Hi! You're happy! Oh 
my gosh. Hello. <laughs> you just enjoying the sunset? Yeah, I know. Everybody else went to sleep in my cabin. I'm like, well, what is life, right? What is, what is really life? Life was, like, I'm 40 years old, so I grew up learning life as to experience things and, and move on and adventure. It was nice talking to you. Nice talking to you too. Are you heading back that way? Yeah. Do you want to give me a lift? Yeah, if you want. If you don't mind? Yeah, man, that would be right awesome. Here. Thanks. Do you want to say hello? <laughs> Hi. Hey, I'm Will. Hey, Will. We're at East Bear I'm Lake. Juliana. <laughs> We're at East Bear Lake. Yeah. Hi. Okay, Carla. You'll be fun Thank you very much. No I just pretended to walk into that cottage because no offense, Will, but I don't know you and I don't I don't need you to know where I live. But what a nice guy. I'm gonna have a little bit of wine. I didn't have any with dinner. Oh my lord. Hey buddy! Not little, you're a pretty big dog. Hi, buddy! Am I gonna need to take you home? That kind of scared me, honestly. Your parents are gonna be looking for you. Not mad about that little guy coming up here. Why do I keep saying little guy? He's literally so big. He or she, I'm not sure. That is the cutest little glass of wine ever. Cheers. Mm. Oh my gosh, it just got so cold so fast. Let's sit by the fire, shall we? Go home, little guy. Go on, go home. He's leaving. <laughs> Whoa. I am not drunk. The ground is not stable. Once upon a time, when I was a child, like four, five, six, around that age. Whoa, can you just maybe take it back a bit? So yeah, when I was a young child, I got poison ivy all over my body. And I ended up being the second worst case in Canada for poison ivy. It was in my eyes. One of my eyes was just completely gooped shut from all the pus and the swelling. Because poison ivy, when you're highly allergic, like some of you might know, uh, you blister and it leaks all over the place. And it's just absolutely not a good time. I actually have poison ivy right now on my legs. But it's going away now and it's not so bad. Do you want to see? Can you see that little bit of it? There's some other bits of it here, but this was the worst of it, thankfully. It's just a small spot, and it's healing now. So after I was covered in it and considered the second worst case in Canada at the time, um, I'm sure there's plenty of insane cases now, but um, when I had it, they didn't even know what it was, so they would take me into hospital rooms and put a camera across my body to like investigate what was going on, because they were like, I don't know, we've never seen this so bad. Eventually they figured it out and were able to help me, but it was, yeah, brutal. Hey. I'll walk this, I guess. Nah. Nah. All right. I'm scared. Ooh. We're gonna see if it can power the TV. This is scary. I feel okay. like the generator is not gonna make it. Why am I only seeing scary movies? This is not okay. What do you mean you're only seeing scary movies? <laughs> yeah, buddy. I'm just rewinding it. I think it's at the end. Okay, so you're good. I'm honestly a little frightened to stay here alone, but... What are you frightened about? Don't say bother you. Lock the door. You feel frightened. I don't know. Call me when you feel scared. You're okay, bye. Okay, bye. Okay, so the generator can handle all the things. There's a lot of scary movies that are on this shelf. Or maybe I was just focusing in on them. Or maybe I'm just scared by random words right now because I just feel scared. This movie, The Fly, oh my god. This gave me trauma about arm wrestling. Hey, watch out, he's chocolate bars. Yeah, so I noticed. <laughs> 
If you know, you know. Here, princesses. Come on, Sophie. The girls. That's where you sleep tonight, okay? So yeah, the nighttime is here. I feel half okay and half extremely not okay. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird because I don't get this feeling when I'm alone in my car. Kind of wish the generator wasn't so loud. Be nice to be able to hear outside. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. It died. Let's try to start it again. Dude, why? It's smoking. It smells no good. Okay. All right. You know what's 100% totally crazy? I actually feel more peaceful now that the generator is off than when it was on. There's just like too much noise, you know? And now I can hear the frogs and the crickets and stuff and it feels like, okay, this is chill. <laughs> Okay. I feel like this just got 1000% creepier, but somehow I feel less scared now that it's dark. This feels peaceful. We basically hate that Layla's just staring out the window because it looks creepy. Try not to do that, bud. This might be a good time to tell you about how my house burnt down. When I was in high school, one summer it was like insanely hot and we decided to, to leave the house for a night because there was no air conditioning and go to my stepdad's place. And then my mom woke us up in the morning and was like, the house burnt down. And I was like, what? I literally just had pajamas on. I didn't even wear shoes. We go over to the house, the main level, ground level, was where all the bedrooms were. And then the basement was where the kitchen and the living room was for some reason, it was interesting. So anyway, my room was at one corner, my mom's was at another, my brother's was here, my sister's was there, and then the garage. And so it started in the garage and traveled up along the house, completely destroyed my room, like nothing was left of my room. My mom's room was like kind of affected. And then my brother's room was completely destroyed and then my sister's room was not even touched. Watch the floor, right, Kim? Oh, bathroom's mint. Oh, my toothbrush. Yes. Oh, I'm just gonna use this. Everything in here is fine. Really? I don't know what's in there, though. Really? It's been good, eh? At least we've got a roof. No leaks. No leaks. You should be videoing this shit. I am. Alright, Juliana's room is just fucked. This is what's left. Holy fuck. Oh, Johnny Depp trial was entertaining today. Oh my god, I gotta see Christina's room, she'll freak. Is this worth keeping? She's still got paint. What's in there? Yeah, that, keep that, Christina will be so happy. Her glass is still good. She's still got clothes, eh? So the house burned down and everyone sort of left the property and moved to different places and there was this mobile home trailer on the property that we used to always rent to people and so my brother took it over when the house burned down and lived in there for a couple of years and then I took it over and lived in there for like four years by myself and so I was living in that mobile home trailer and then I think eight years almost to the day of our house burning down the barn burned down. We had been trying to clean up the barn. And so then I get home from work and my dad had just left to go to the dump to drop a bunch of garbage. And I f assumed he was having a barrel fire because I saw smoke. And so I was like, okay. And then I went around the corner and the whole barn was in flames. 
Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Fuck. Please get here. Please get here. Please get here. Oh my god. I just like couldn't believe what I was seeing. Just shook by this. This. So I called the fire department, which is just around the corner from us and uh, called my dad and he raced over and he tries to get a hose and is like trying to hose the barn down. The fire department it took a long time actually to, to, to start putting it out. It was just, it was just crazy. So, so yeah, we lost uh, both of the like major structures on the property. <laughs> yeah, I'm laughing, but it's, it's not really funny, but like you kind of come to terms with things. I felt like after my house burned down, I was like, material stuff really doesn't matter to me. It can, it doesn't mean anything. We put meaning to a lot of things and it can be really, really beautiful. But at the end of the day, it's just stuff. And now my sister lives on the property and my dad lives there on the property and the mobile home trailer is still there. Um, it's actually bigger now. They renovated it to be like a bigger home and that's where my trailer is. And, and yeah, so there's that story. I'm not even gonna brush my teeth tonight or anything like that. Why are you going to bed then? I'm just sitting here with two candles. <laughs> and just scared. Honestly, I kind of stopped being scared. Oh, well, that's good. Just relax. Have a spend a fire a bit, and then go to bed. If you need anything else, call me. All right. Okay. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. Some of you might be thinking, like, okay, why are you doing this? And my answer is honestly, why not? I don't want to go to parties. I've done that. Like, it's fun. Don't get me wrong. I had a blast my early 20s like partying and doing all that stuff but um doesn't really bring me joy you know at the end of the day I'm like I feel like shit I'd rather do stuff like this and then find other people that like this kind of stuff so that we can do this stuff together and I just decided to do this alone this time because I've never done that before and I wanted to to see if I could do it I wanted to see what it was like I wanted to prove to myself that I am brave and strong enough to do so. And it may seem silly, like you know, some people are gonna be like, what, this is no big deal. Go, go, you go stay at the cabin. Like, why would you ever be afraid? But I don't know. I have a fear of the dark, <laughs> but it sounds beautiful, doesn't it? It's very peaceful. So yeah, I think I'm gonna go inside now. <laughs> Good morning. Shortly after I like kind of fell asleep, Layla was just barking and growling and growling and barking and like staring out the window for so long. Obviously something was outside and I just didn't care to check or let her out or anything like that. Also, check this out. How's it going? I was destroyed by black flies. <laughs> it's like 6 a.m. right now, so I think I'm just gonna get back in bed for a little bit. All in all, I'm really proud of myself for staying the night. I'm really happy that I felt so much calmer after the generator went out. Like that's just what was something I wasn't expecting to feel. Um, so that's really nice. 
makes me realize like why I feel really peaceful when I'm camping and when I'm like in the forest. Just a lot less noise. And so the generator and the lights and everything, it just felt like I was like a lighthouse. Like it was like, look at me, I'm in this cabin alone, like pitch black outside, and but the generator's blasting and the lights are on. So take a look what we have inside here, you know? And then, yeah, so once they shut off, the lights shut off, the generator shut off, I was like, oh, I can hear the bugs. It's quiet. <laughs> gonna be raining here most of the day so I'm um, I'm just gonna pack up and head home I got a lot of work to do at home I'm glad I came though kind of random but yeah I'm glad I did it <laughs>